Welcome to part two of my updated geometry node building tutorial. There's a link below this video that you can go check out part one. I'm figuring most of you have seen that, but just in case you should now have something similar to this. Uh, it doesn't matter what colors you chose. You can do whatever you want with that, but you should have three different colored blocks stacked up. And when you change the floors right here, this goes up and down. If you actually do set up these parameters, they will appear over here. Just an example. If you just go right here, it says base. You can see that's the collection. We'll just go back here. But yeah, so it, you can actually just access everything right through the modifier panel and that can help speed things up so you don't have to go and open up this viewport and do all of that. So what's the first thing we're going to do? We're actually going to start adding some colors into this because we're going to learn a few very important things. So let's take this and move it over here. And what's nice about this, is since we've already applied this transformation, you can shift D this, it will appear in the correct collection and we don't have to do anything else after that. Let's call this middle B, shift D again. So I'm hitting shift D and X to move it. C and middle D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the material properties, I'm going to tap this, this is going to become, uh, let's make, let's keep them light colors. Let's go pink. Let's go cyan or light blue and maybe a yellow. And then from here, we just go pink. We go yellow and see, Oh, I didn't actually hit the, ah, so I didn't make a mistake. So change this back to green and then I forgot to hit this button here. So this is yellow, but notice as we're changing this, the blocks in our building are actually beginning to change already. I really like that because it's pulling a random instance from our collection. So let's hit this and then we will go. This one was cyan, I think, or just light blue. Good enough. But there is one problem with this, and this is going to be the main thing we're kind of focusing on in this video. If I move this around, it's the same pattern, which you don't want because we're going to make it so they're all changing in the building and we need that to be randomized. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to make this one brown. So bring it to the red, bring this down, Maybe bring that up a little bit more. You get it close enough to brown. And then we're also going to make this purple. So I'm going to make the darker colors the roof just because I, I find that might be a bit easier to organize. Uh, red is going to stay the same in the base there. Now, how are we going to make it so that it's not a pattern? It's going to be changing every time. And this is where things are going to get a little bit weird. Not too difficult. We're going to be able to do it, but it is going to get a bit strange. So I'm going to move these over here. So I want to create more room right here. I'm going to grab all this and I'm just going to move it this way. I'm going to cut. I'm going to do this. And just go like that so that we have everything sort of separated out and we can clearly see everything in our workspace. So if I click here, I feel like there should be a way to just kind of grab this and expand it. But what you can do is just grab these two, I guess, move them over like that. And I, I don't know, that's why I said, like, it's a bit weird, like how it kind of moves like that. But for now, we can just do that. And we can grab just this one, move this over here. So the key to this is this right here, the instance index. This is the part I was talking about where I feel like this gets a little bit goofy on how on how I people are talking about going and doing this. So pick random value. And we're going to go object info. Yeah, it's this is just going to get weird. There's really no way around it. So this is the way I thought worked the best. We're going to take the base and we can drop this in here. And the object info, really all this is saying is that this is just the, the base. So as the base moves around, we're gonna take this location, we're gonna plug it into the seed, 
We're going to plug this into the instance index. I'm going to change this to 100. And yeah, that's it took me a second just to realize what I had done, but it can't be original. It has to be relative, meaning that as this moves, it is relative to that. So if we move this around now, you can see that it's changing. Um, the more objects you have, the better it's going to be. And I think you can actually change this around. Uh, if you bring this down to like zero, yeah, then you'll kind of just get that. Um, you can kind of mess around with it. The more ran, I think I had like a hundred. I didn't really see any problem with it. Like I said, the only thing I thought was weird about this is because if it's, it is actually moving based on location, it, it kind of creates some problems that you'll see as we move down in the last version of the geometry nodes, there was just a straight up seed that you could plug into it. Uh, but you can't do that anymore because if you try and go plug this, like you need to, <laughs> you need to make it a random number, but it doesn't seem like there's anything that can plug into this seed that is going to work in the correct way. So yeah, it, it is a bit weird and you're going to see some kind of weird patterns like this. W what I think you just kind of have to, I guess, concede with just how easy we're making everything is that theoretically these bases are going to be moving around, so they shouldn't have the exact same seed. We're, we're Like I said, we're going to get more into that, but that is good for now. We are now going to do the same thing, but we are also going to do it for the roof. So let's grab these two. Just grab this. Grab this little nub down here too. pull this over. Grab object info random value and that goes here object info it's gonna go here we can pop it open again and just see location into the seed and now we can oh got to plug this into instance index and now we can see that it is indeed working as we move, we can see everything is cycling through. And now we have, we'll call them random enough skyscrapers. I, I want to get into finding out how you can make actual random seeds based on the object, sort of like when you use the object info inside of materials or whatever it's called, where you actually have the random output. I, I can't seem to replicate that in this where it's truly random besides using the location, which to me isn't random. It's just close enough to it but yeah we can actually keep adding these in as well so we could have like 10 of these as long as you're willing to set up the windows to get a more realistic and less chance of them repeating this just seems more intuitive you can look at this and sort of read what's going on uh, you have the mesh line it's creating basically the, the, the line going up and then we're taking it and putting instances of our building onto the points and this, these two are just to make a seed so that it's random. And then this is actually pulling the collection, which goes into instances, which is plugged into here, which just means that it will be taking a random instance based on the seed from the collection. And then we're just repeating that with the blue squares, except we're using a multiply add so that every time a floor is added, the roof height will move up to blocks. I'd really appreciate it if you could throw a like my way. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love to see you in part three, where we are just going to be texturing the building. We are going to do a little bit of modeling to get everything up to speed. And I hope to see you over there.